Yo, what's good, Fufu gang? Welcome to a new series, Fufu Fridays. It's an album that I drop on the last Friday of every month, consisting five documentaries. And if you're watching this, all five of the documentaries are gonna be out right now on the channel. So make sure you guys go check them out. Oh, and by the way, the soundtrack is brought to you by Ice Kareem. He's an upcoming SoundCloud artist from Atlanta, Georgia, with a dope and unique sound. His music is gonna be playing in all five of the documentaries. So if you guys are rocking with it, I'm gonna leave a SoundCloud, Instagram, and Spotify link inside the description. Go ahead, check them out, but no time to waste. Let's get into this documentary. Eric Higgins, better known as Juice World, was a very controversial figure inside of hip hop while he was alive and even after the time of his passing. He built a name for himself in the SoundCloud class with a sad emo type of sound. Similar to XXX and Tashian, Lil Pete and Trippy Red. And the biggest similarity he has with those artists is that he started gaining money, power, and fame at such a young age. So he was really bound to make dumb, questionable decisions that he probably couldn't explain. Now, one of the dumb, questionable decisions he made was probably joining a well known Chicago street gang, No Limit, after he got fame. As mostly every gang member, gang bangs because of the environment they were brought up in and had no other option. But Juice World definitely had an option since he had millions of dollars in his bank account and a nice house in Los Angeles, California. So why would he join a street gang that's known to have nearly 30 fallen soldiers, many injured, and scarred for life with PTSD? Today we're going to be looking at what Juice World got himself into and how he might have contributed to a gang distribution gang. Now gang, please know I'm not a rat at all. All the information I'm giving to you guys inside the video is well known facts to the public. I might make a theory or two, but just know it's all cap 100%. And if any feds are using this to build a case on somebody, just know you're literally building a case off of a little kid's words like it's literally conspiracy theories don't take it too deep but for the fans watching this definitely take it to consideration if probably true to the feds it's cap Juice World first started hanging out with No Limit members after he got signed to famous 79th Street Heroes, Lil Bibby and G-Money's record label, Grade A Productions. Grade A Productions has welcomed a lot of artists inside the industry, but is known for being in a lot of controversy, especially from what happened with Juice World. and fans are still questioning if they're all innocent. It was supposed to be all professional, as they were supposed to find talent, in this case Juice World. Put him inside of a studio and make the best music of his life and make sure it sells. And that's exactly what they did. But along the way, Grade A became a brotherhood. And some could say that that brotherhood led up to Lil Bibby and G Money putting Juice World on with numerous No Limit members, such as G Herbo, No Limit Cairo, Lil Greg, and many others. It seemed like they couldn't keep the label just a business. Like for instance, if Juice World was inside the studio recording a hit song, Bibby would bring in Mad No Limit members just to vibe with Juice. As Bibby recalls in an interview, the first time Juice World was in the studio with him, he filled the whole entire room up with all of his childhood friends from his neighborhood. And I'm guessing that would happen a lot because after a while, Juice World would build an unbreakable bond with all these gang members, and that would lead up to Juice World getting blessed into No Limit. And a lot of people who are into gang politics wouldn't see a problem with that. Being getting blessed into a gang is nothing new. It actually happens a lot, but it's a little weird when you bless someone in that you haven't known for at least a year. The only time a gang will do that for you is if you're paying them or you're investing vacuum seals and drugs into the hood to keep the trap have emotion and help gang members have more plays. And a lot of people believe that's what was going on. In Juice World, someone who was always rapping about drugs and taking them would definitely have easy access to many kilos and pounds. No Limit would definitely look at him as a supplier who would front them pounds and wouldn't expect the back end, as No Limit giving them protection and the image of a gangster would be the payment. But honestly, maybe he was profiting from investing drugs inside the hood because he would often be seen flying private jets as he bought his own plane. And rapper Lil Yachty said, most rappers don't pay for the private jet with their rap money, as the money they make in the industry wouldn't be enough to fund their flights. So Juice Roll would be looked at as an important factor in the No Limit team. Upping his position and status in the streets, people would take him more seriously. It got to the point where Juice Roll would be comfortable throwing up gang signs publicly. He was even seen numerous times throwing up the rakes, a gang sign known to diss the GD nation and all his fallen soldiers. Mind you, Juice Roll didn't claim to be in the streets killing GDs before the fame, but the people he was around definitely were, and Juice saw it as, if they didn't like them, he didn't either. Juice World's dissing the GDs and Faisal Land's biggest rivalry Lakeside members would get out of hand. As Juice World claims to be smoking deceased KTS members, Lil Mista, KD, and Posto. They're gang members who passed away way before Juice World was affiliated with No Limit back in 2013. 
and that would make fans and rivalry gang members call him out for being a poser in the gang life. And with Juice World doing all the stuff like painting his nails, rocking feminine clothes, and rocking curly chokers, I can tell you from someone who stays in Southside Raleigh, a place that's not even as bad as Chicago, if you do all that stuff and claim to be a gangster, we're gonna look at you like a goofy. But Juice World wasn't listening to what the people were saying, as he had rapper friends in the industry that had a somewhat similar feminine style as him, but they were well respected in the streets before fame, and they stamped him. Artists like Playboy Cardi, Trippy Red, and Young Thug are great examples. So Juice World continued to rep the gang and rap about gang activity. Songs like Realer and Realer, Bandit, and Bad Boy are great examples. As he would state that he stays with killers, he told Smith and Wesson's and Berettas, and he lost his bro to a pistol. December 2019, Juice World's career was at an all-time high, and he was enjoying his birthday for about a week straight, so he decided to have a little party in Chicago with all of his close day one friends and No Limit friends, but trouble was struck on the flight from Cali to Chicago. He will possess about 70 pounds of vacuum-sealed marijuana, six bottles of codeine, and tons of different drugs like oxycodone, Percocets, and many other unknown pills. He would freak out once he heard several cops were waiting for him once his flight landed and would consume a lot of pills and would eventually end up overdosing about 30 minutes later. But the question everyone wants to know is, why did Juice Roll have that much drugs on the flight? Those drugs couldn't have just been for him, and chances are, if Juice Roll was still alive, he would have got convicted for drug trafficking. But Juice Roll couldn't have been worried about the feds, because if he was, he would have just threw all the drugs down the toilet. So we can't blame his death on drug trafficking, but more so of just trying to have a party. I want to believe Juice World will always have this amount of drugs on him on his private jet flights, and he would distribute them to the streets of Chicago. And the event that took place on December 8, 2019 was just the first time it went left. It just sucks the first time will be his last. The Fed stated that No Limit has been running a drug organization since the 60s, back when they were called the Black Peastones. They were racking millions of dollars since then with their open air drug operation, and I personally believe Juice World played a huge part in continuing their motions in the streets while he was alive. Juice World was many things while he was on Earth, and a lot of them were unknown, and that leads to a lot of people having insane conspiracy theories about him. But for the respect of his legacy, we're just gonna stick with putting him in the description of being a goaded, multi-platinum, charting, selling artist who helped millions of kids cope with their pain. I hope that's the way Juice World's remembered. He truly seemed like a good-hearted kid who went down the wrong path. But nonetheless, we can learn from his mistakes and turn the negative into positive. 999 forever and foo foo out. Gang. I get as right as my bone in mud. I swim my blood to the bag of the bud. My niggas got in the blood. I am just cool when I hop out the club. No, I'm a flood. All of these bitches just trying to get tough.